Caroline, thanks for coming in today. Um, we haven't had many young people who've been in to talk about their cancer condition. And yours is a leukemia, isn't it? Yeah, um, acute myeloid. Acute myeloid leukemia. And um, should we go back then and talk about how you were first diagnosed? What was it that um, first brought up a warning sign or symptom? Um, for the last, uh, from about November to December time, um, I started coming down with a lot of colds and viruses and mouth abscesses. So we were feeling run down, I went to the doctors mm. um, and uh, they just said that they thought I had like just a normal winter bug virus going around. So they gave me some anti-sickness tablets um, yes. for me being sick and sent me off for a couple of weeks to, but to go back for some blood samples. Um, but before I got, managed to go back for the blood samples, I um, started losing my vision. So I went back to the Loughborough Walking Centre and um, they thought again it was just because I was like so like dehydrated and stuff that to go home, drink plenty and get a few days good in bed. Um, so I did that, I was in bed for about a fortnight and then literally I just got to the point where I just said to my mum, I said, I, I just feel awful. And um, she, I went to, managed to go to work on the Wednesday and um, I did do a client's hair, I got, did a colour and everything. Felt a bit weak and uh, I just always felt like I just had a rotten cold, mm. like nothing like major. Yeah. And then when um, i uh, done a blow dryer on her hair. The hair dryer must have been that warm, it made me pass out. Mm. Um, so my client went off and then my friend who I worked with, she asked, she does reflexology. So she asked me to jump up on a couch and she said, I'm gonna feel your feet and find out what's wrong with you because you've not been right and you look ever so pale. And uh, she was just touching my feet and she started crying and I didn't, I felt stupid, I didn't know what she was crying about. And she said, oh, if I didn't know you, I just feel like I was touching a dead body. Mm. And she said, I need to ring an ambulance. And I was just like, yeah, whatever, I'll lie. <laughs> like, I thought, I thought she, was she was being a bit overdramatic. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, but I'd already rang my mum to come and pick me up because I didn't feel safe driving. Mm. And um, she said, oh, can your mum take you to the Royal? You need to go in, something's not right. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll go. And then when my mum turned up, she just said, oh, can I have your permission to ring an ambulance? I just don't feel that something is wrong and I've, I'm getting very bad vibes. And I just thought it was a bit of a witchcraft stuff that she does. So I just said, I said, I've always said to her for a joke, you're never touching my feet because you'd always tell me I've got something wrong with me. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> so um, I went to a book brought in by an ambulance um, and they did my... ECG, yes, um, the heart. yeah, found out that it was pumping too much or something. Mm -hmm. um, the pressure was low or something, mm -hmm. but it wasn't enough in blood in me, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. um, so they did my blood samples and said that I needed uh, three bags or measurements of uh, a transfusion, so I had to have three blood transfusions, and I felt actually back to normal after they gave me those because I didn't realise my haemoglobin had gone down to five. Wow, that's low, yeah. Yeah. Because normally it would be above, like, ten at least. Yeah, or eight, I think they said, is when you need at least one or something. Yeah, yeah. So they said they didn't know how I managed to stay yeah. on my feet so anyway. So almost like half the regular level. Yeah. So when they gave you that blood, you felt, like, symptomatically, you, you know, just... I just felt, felt like everything moved. disappeared. I felt, like, yeah. back to normal again. But they hadn't actually got to the bottom of it at that stage. No. They took me into a cubicle then, which, as I was drove into the cubicle, I did notice the cubicle was 2013. Oh, it was 13, and then I thought to myself, this is year 2013. This is not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't think the number 13 is very lucky for me. <laughs> and then... Um, I just lay there and she come and uh, I think it must have been a doctor because they were well, it wasn't just a, a nurse she was just coming and asking to do loads of other tests to me and things like that and how I've been describing how I've been feeling and, and any of these like where these uh, bruisings and things have been coming from and I just thought it might have been from the odd bottle of wine one night when I'd been out with my sister-in-law and then fell over or something like that but um no they they she did, a, she did a test and then she said there is a strong possibility that you've either got um, lymphomic or leukaemia, but it could also be just a really, really bad virus. But 
I were kind of like, as soon as she said leukemia, oh, I've got two friends that have had it before. I just knew straight away. Mm. And um, my mum was a bit more like, oh no, it's a virus. It's not going to be a virus. And I was just like, no, I just know it is. I said, I've, I've known two friends. I said, and it's weird that I know two people that we've all grown up together. I said, because you don't really know if anybody that suffers the same thing. Mm. So what was the next step then? They thought that was provisionally the diagnosis. Yeah, I had to go up, straight up onto the ward, um, finish having all my blood. Um, I think it was ward 16. And then the next day they took me into a private room. I had to be isolated from people because my bone marrow had failed, like my immune system. I mm -hmm. was at a high risk for infection. Mm. So then they took me for a bone marrow biopsy. Um, which I kind of think, I'm not sure, but they asked if they could take two samples in, for a trial, which also made me think that they thought it definitely was leukemia as well, because I thought they're obviously just not, they don't really want to make me go back in and have it done again. But um, I was fine with that. I know people have said it was painful, but I didn't know what to expect. So I just thought I've got quite a good pain threshold. So, but even though I must admit that was quite uncomfortable. But the so gas... People worry about that when they hear about the bone marrow biopsy. Yeah, but you forget about it as soon as it's done. Mm. Like uh, the gas and air, just def definitely recommend that. I mm. think it just made me feel like I was going to sleep. Yeah. So uh, every time I have one of them done now, I just look forward to the gas and air. <laughs> yes, it's an anaesthetic, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's it. Um, so you were on the wards, and then did they break the news to you in, in, a, in, a, in my room? In your room? Yeah, they said they'd be back at four o'clock. The, the results um, to come and tell me then um, but my parents weren't available till about six mm. so um, it was about six o'clock when my partner he turned up um, with my little boy and um, I think my, my dad was working away for it. I think it was my stepdad mm. and my mum and um, straight away they come in a lady and hunter and I could just tell when, as soon as she walked in the room, she just went, oh, I'm so glad you've got all your family here. And I just thought, oh, no. <laughs> so this was the haematologist, wasn't it, come to yeah. tell you the diagnosis? Yeah, yeah. But she was really good because a lot of people apparently don't always like because she's straight to the point, but I like people to just get straight to the point and no, no blase around little things. She just asked me basically what I understood of where I was at this minute and what was happening to me. So I explained it back to her and she says, yeah, and she says, I do have to confirm that you have got leukaemia and it is a type called myeloid, acute myeloid and things like that. And she gave me leaflets and she said I wasn't really going to speak. She didn't want to speak to me too much that evening because of letting it go in first. Um, because she said, as she was saying it to me, she says, you're just going to go deaf in a minute because all you're going to start doing is thinking about what you've got to do. Mm. And, um, and she said, I can already see you think you had it anyway because you've got your appointment book on the side ready to cancel your clients and prepare yourself. And I, I'm quite organised like that. I, was, I had to be organised. I, I have to be organised in everything.